Good afternoon, Liberty Baptist family and friends, and to all those that may be watching this afternoon. I want to welcome everybody to this evening's service. Uh, continue to pray amidst this COVID-19 pandemic that's taking place in our nation and in our community. Uh, please continue to pray for all of those families that have been affected by this, and uh, for those that have not been affected by it, pray that the Lord would keep a hedge of protection up about us and that this pandemic will soon come to an end. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we open up to the scriptures and continue on in our study in the book of James. Just two prayer requests that I'd like to remind you of and get you caught up on since uh, the last time uh, we uh, uh, were here. Um, pray for Sharon Crocker. Uh, she has a, a need. The Lord knows about this. Uh, pray for her and her family. Uh, pray for Sister Sharon. And also uh, pray for uh, Brother Larry and all of his family. Uh, we've been praying for Dinky's sister, uh, her health and uh, the situation that uh, she's been battling for the past several weeks. Uh, received message uh, from Brother Larry that uh, she had passed away uh, Tuesday afternoon. And so, uh, or Tuesday morning, I guess it was, but uh, he texted me Tuesday afternoon to let me know uh, the information. And so, Pray for Brother Larry, pray for Dinky, and pray for all of the family that you would, that the Lord would be with them uh, during, their, at, uh, during this time of loss. And so uh, certainly remember uh, Brother Larry and his family, and uh, please uh, be in prayer for all the prayer requests. Uh, I'll go back over them again this coming uh, Sunday. Uh, in the meantime, if you have new prayer requests, uh, send them uh, to me or Christy via text or call and leave a message or you know call and let us know or send it through the church email uh, however way of communication you want to reach out to us uh, but if you have updated prayer requests please let us know uh, I'll be sure to go over all the prayer requests this coming Sunday morning in our prayer request time and so uh, be sure to send those uh, if it's been answered prayers or any updates on a prayer request that we've already been praying about, please let me know also, uh, so that way I can share it with our congregation and share it with our church family. Uh, each and every week, God answers uh, uh, some of our prayers, and also each and every week, it seems like there's new needs and new things that uh, we're praying about. Uh, but we do know this, that God, uh, 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 with Him, nothing is uh, too hard, and with Him, truly, all things are possible. And so we need to continue to pray, and I hope that, uh, that you'll continue to remember the church family. All the written, spoken, and unspoken requests, uh, please continue to be in prayer for these. Uh, some people have reached out to me in regard to paying their tithe, and some have already been proactive and mailed, uh, mailed their tithe in. And I want to say thanks. I appreciate this very much. Uh, I do go get the mail on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. Uh, but uh, uh, in regard to an individual's tithe, uh, if a person tells me that they're sending their tithe via the mail, I do not open that up. Uh, what I do uh, is I just leave that in the envelope and then I turn that in uh, to the, the treasurer. I give that to Haley and let her uh, take care of that on that side of the ledger. And so uh, if you want to mail your tithe in, I appreciate that. Uh, in spite of us not being able to meet, uh, we still have the electric bill and missionaries to support and uh, different aspects of the ministry. And so uh, please uh, continue to be faithful to the Lord in your giving. As I always mention every service, the Lord loveth the cheerful giver. And so please be faithful in your tithes and in your offerings. Uh, do not mail them to the physical address where the church is at, which is 1410 Davis Street. If you mail your tithe in, please send it to Post Office Box 56. And it's Marstown, Tennessee. And so please uh, uh, mail those to, to PO Box 56. And also, if you do uh, decide to mail your tithe in, uh, reach out to me or Christy, let us know. Uh, so that way, when we do receive the mail, we can let you know that uh, we received it. Uh, one individual uh, uh, mailed out their tithe, but uh, we've not received it yet. It may uh, show up in the mail and everything. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, if you do that, that way we can look for it, and that way we can let you know that we did receive it. And again, I'll be turning all of the tithe uh, over to Haley and she'll be taking care of the deposits and that sort of thing uh, or if you'd like for us to come by and pick it up uh, or uh, come by our house and drop it off however you want to do it whatever's most convenient for you uh, 
uh, but please be faithful to the Lord in your giving. Uh, the Bibles uh, that we ordered uh, to share with Brother Alan Lawson's church uh, have come in. They're here at the church right now. Uh, spoke with Brother Jeff Massey via text message, and he and I are going to try to get together probably Saturday, and uh, they're going to come over and, uh, and pick up the Bibles. If you would like to have some of those Bibles uh, to hand out to family or friends or co-workers, whatever the case may be, uh, just reach out to me or let Miss Christie know. Uh, we may want to keep maybe a case or two cases here for distribution, uh, but uh, if no one reaches out to me and nobody uh, says anything to me in regard to this, then we're going to send all of them uh, to Brother, uh, uh, Brother Lawson's church uh, to distribute. They're going ahead and getting ready uh, to have these uh, to hand out to the community. And in spite of this uh, pandemic, uh, they're still going to go forward and distribute these. I'm not for sure of the dates yet, but I know that they're making preparations to do this. And so again, uh, if you'd like to have some of those uh, to hand out uh, here, just let me know and we'll withhold some and uh, send the rest down to uh, Mercy Baptist Church. But uh, Vacation Bible School, August the 1st, uh, we've uh, talked with Spacewalk and we've got the big slide and uh, reserved. And so right now, August 1st is our vacation Bible school. Of course, this is going to be contingent upon uh, this pandemic, uh, how long it takes to recover and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, anyway, right now, that's what we have got scheduled. Uh, mark your calendar, one day vacation Bible school on Saturday, August the 1st. And in the meantime, I'm going to be praying for a theme and if you'd like to be involved with the Vacation Bible School and either helping with uh, teaching, uh, with the crafts and uh, activities and cooking and clean up and that sort of thing, uh, please go ahead and start praying about this, what you could do to help us with our Vacation Bible School. And so that's all the announcements that I have right now, church. Uh, 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 like I said on the prayer request, uh, I'll go over those in more detail uh, on the next video coming up uh, for the Sunday morning uh, service. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any more prayer requests or anything that I need to share with the congregation here at the church, uh, please let me know and I'll be sure to uh, let everybody know this. But uh, tonight uh, we're going to be looking at James uh, chapter 1. Uh, we'll pick up uh, reading of verse number 8 and we'll read down through verse uh, number 10. And uh, we'll look at verses 9 and 10. Last week we left off at number 8. And I'll read that, and we'll read verses 9 and 10, and then uh, we'll see what the Lord has in store for us this evening. James chapter 1, verse number 8, the Word of God tells us, that, <clears throat> excuse me, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And we talked about uh, uh, last time that we met uh, how a double-minded man uh, is unstable, he's unsure, uh, is hypocritical, if you will. Uh, just has a, a lot of different things uh, taking place in his heart and his mind. He's just not sure of what he wants, uh, 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 looks at other people, looks at other circumstances, and he's just unstable, as the Word of God says, in all of his ways. Not only does it affect him in his personal life, per se, it affects his relationship with his family, it affects his relationship with his co-workers, with his neighbors, and with all he comes in contact with. And so, uh, uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And then notice here, verse number nine, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. And so at this time, let's stop and let's ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures. And let's look at verses nine and 10 tonight in regard to our study. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us, dear Lord, to be here this evening, dear Lord. Uh, uh, Father, we are thankful for your word and for the instruction and truths that we receive from thy word. And Father, tonight as we look to the bread of life, I pray that you feed us with food from heaven this evening. Lord, I pray that uh, we would open up our eyes and our hearts to, to the teaching and preaching of thy word and that we would learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee and that we would uh, uh, learn something, dear Lord, to be able to share with others to help them along uh, this uh, race we call life. And Father, I pray that you would help me now as I teach and preach. Father, I'd ask and pray that you give me clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, I pray uh, uh, that you would just uh, give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach and teach thy blessed word. 
And Father, I pray for each and every family. Dear Lord, I pray for each and every prayer request. I ask and pray that you would bless in a special and mighty way. Lord, I pray for our nation and all of the other nations that have been affected by this uh, coronavirus. Uh, Father, I pray, dear Lord, if it be thy will, I pray that you would just stop uh, the spread of this virus. For all of those that have been infected, I pray that you provide healing to them. And Father, for those that have not contracted this disease, I pray that you put a hedge of protection up about each and every one of us and that you would stop the spread of this pandemic. And Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, for uh, uh, our president and all those in position of authority, I pray, uh, Lord, uh, that you would uh, give them uh, wisdom and understanding, dear Lord, and guidance uh, to make uh, the right types of decisions that's best for our nation. Uh, Lord, uh, we want to look out uh, for the well-being and the health of all the citizens, dear Lord, and Father, also the economic situation, uh, Father, that uh, we're facing. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just give our leaders the, the wisdom, dear Lord, and the guidance they need to make those decisions that would best bring honor and glory to thy name and would be in the best interest for our nation. And Lord, I pray uh, for each one that's watching uh, here this evening. I pray that you bless in a special way. And Father, for those that may not be able to, to view or to watch, Lord, you know their needs, you know their circumstance. I pray that you bless them wherever they may be at this evening. And Lord, tonight, if there's uh, one that's watching that's never been saved and never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that you convict their heart of sin, that you draw them into yourself, and that they'd be saved before, uh, before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we pray now that you would just bless the upcoming uh, preaching and teaching of thy word, for it's in Christ's name we do ask it all, and amen. Notice here in verse number nine, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Uh, beloved, uh, here when we read the text, let the brother of low degree, it's talking about a brother of lesser wealth, if you will. Uh, we know this here because it's tied with verse number 10, but the rich talking about the wealthy. And so that one of low degree is one of uh, lesser wealth, if you will. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. I love it in the world that we live in today. There is so much in, uh, emphasis put on temporal things and put on monetary things. I love it an individual spirituality is not gauged by their checkbook of how much they have or how much they don't have. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, God is not a respecter of persons. And at the end of the day, you can't buy your way into heaven. You can't use your wealth as an influence to persuade God to let you into heaven. The only way that an individual is going to go to heaven is to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And as the Word of God says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so, beloved, uh, uh, today there are a lot of people thinking because of their wealth, because of their influence, because of their power. Well, I give to this cause, I give to that cause, I give to the church. Uh, beloved, uh, I appreciate that, and I'm thankful that you have a heart, that you want to do that. But at the end of the day, God is not a respecter of persons. Salvation, uh, going to heaven, cannot be purchased with gold or silver or money, if you will. Uh, the only way that we're going to go to heaven is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He's the one that paid for our salvation when he died on the cross of Calvary. And so the word of God tells us here, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Uh, beloved, there's going to come a day uh, when an individual that may not have, uh, as the world would term it and see it today, a mansion and have a lot of wealth and maybe not wear the finest clothes and eat at the most fine restaurants and live in the most elegant subdivision in the community. But there is going to come that day uh, when he steps out into eternity because of his personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He'll have a mansion over the hilltop. He'll have a home in heaven where the riches of this world will burn up and pass away one day. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 13, verse number 30, And behold, they, uh, and there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. 
and love it today. If you have money, if you have influence, if you have power, uh, you usually get your way. You're first in the line to be served. You're first in the uh, first in the, the checkout line, if you will. You're first to receive this. You're first to receive that. May I submit to you, verily, verily, I say to you, you have your reward now because, beloved, the things of this world will burn up and pass away. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us here in Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 7, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Uh, remember in the gospel accounts, Jesus Christ asked this question, what shall it profit a man, or what shall he gain, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You can have everything today that the world has to offer. You can have the best food, the best clothes, the best automobiles, the best boats, uh, the best the house. But beloved, that's not going to allow you to go to heaven. It's your personal relationship with Jesus Christ and knowing him as Lord and Savior and may I ask this question at this time, has there ever been a time that you can go back to in your life that you knelt down and you were sorry and broken hearted for your sin and you were broken hearted and had a contrite spirit because God dealt with your heart and you realized that you were a sinner and that you needed help and God spoke to your heart and you cried down and asked God to forgive you and you cried out to God to save you. And friend, if you ask God to come into your heart and save you, friend, you're saved this evening. And beloved, you have a mansion in heaven. You have an inheritance waiting for you. And you have great riches waiting for you. But friend, if you cannot go back to that place in time that you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you, I beg of you this evening, friend, don't put your uh, faith and your trust in uncertain riches but put your faith and trust in the one true and living God. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by Him. Uh, the Bible tells us here in Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 31. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. Uh, beloved, be thankful for what you have today. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, whatever state he was in, therewith to be content. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't let the world dicta dictate to you whether you're a success or you're a failure, but whether or not you have this or you have that. Uh, but beloved, uh, the text tells us here, uh, he that oppresseth the poor reproach, reproacheth his maker. Uh, beloved, I know people that make fun of the poor, make fun of the destitute, uh, beloved, Jesus Christ said, the poor you will always have with you. Uh, beloved, I don't have everything that I want, but God's blessed me so abundantly, I have more than I need. And friend, if you're watching tonight, you've uh, been blessed of God. You may not have everything that you want, but I guarantee you, you have more than you need tonight. God's been good to each and every one of us. Thank God for the clothes that's on your back. Thank God for the shoes that's on your feet. Thank God for the vehicle that you drive. Thank God for the home that you have. Be thankful for the blessings that God gives to you each and every day. And some people may make fun of you because of the brand shoes you wear or the brand jacket that you wear or the type of food uh, that you, that you uh, partake of or the grocery store where you grow, go and shop. Uh, beloved, don't let that bother you. Uh, beloved, be thankful for what God's given you. Uh, uh, today the, there's so much keeping up with the Jones and trying to impress this person and impress that person. Just be thankful that you're saved and that you're born again and all these things will pass away one day. And beloved, you'll have a mansion in heaven. You'll have a home in heaven. Praise be to God. I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but I look forward to that day of no more fear, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more departing, no more pain. I'll tell you what, we have something to look forward to as a child of God. Uh, but we see here, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Uh, beloved, don't lay up yourselves treasure here upon this earth. But friend, why don't you lay up treasure in heaven. At the end of the day, 
when we stand before God and we enter into eternity. It's only going to be what we've done for the Lord Jesus Christ that will stand for eternity and have any eternal value. The Bible tells us here in the Gospel of Matthew, as I turn there, Matthew chapter number 6, I want to share this portion of Scripture with you here this evening. In Matthew chapter 6, verse number 19, the Word of God tells us, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And notice here, verse number 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Uh, beloved, today, a lot of people today are laying up themselves treasures here upon this earth. And beloved, one day it's all going to burn up. It's all going to pass away. Uh, beloved, there's nothing wrong with collecting things. There's nothing wrong with having things. Uh, beloved, don't let things have you. Don't let that be that that's all you live for. That's all you think about. That's all you desire to have is things and treasures upon this earth. Because, beloved, I submit to you, according to the authority of God's Word, these things will pass away one day. The gun collections will be gone. The coin collections will be gone. The model car collections will be gone. The fishing rod collections will be gone. The pocketbook collections will be gone. The wardrobe will be gone. And only what you and I have done for Jesus Christ will stand for eternity. Now, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 6, Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Uh, beloved, if God so blessed you that uh, you have a, a certain amount of wealth and uh, maybe have a, a more treasure than uh, uh, some people, I thank God for that, and you should thank God for that. Uh, but beloved, uh, there's nothing wrong with having money. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. Uh, but beloved, if it uh, uh, dominates your life and it consumes your life and that's all you live for, uh, beloved, uh, you have your eyes upon temporal things. You have your eyes upon earthly things. And these things will come and go. And as I've already stated, they will pass away. Now, beloved, it's not money that's bad. It's the love of money. That is the root of all evil. And beloved, because of people's greed and their lust and their carnality and their desire to have earthly things, it will cause them to think ungodly thoughts and do ungodly things and take advantage of the oppressed and take advantage of the poor to satisfy their own lust. And it's an ungodly lifestyle. It's an ungodly way of thinking. And so beloved... Uh, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's nothing wrong with uh, being rich. But beloved, it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. And the Bible tells us better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. I uh, believe a lot of people today are dishonest. Time and time again, almost every day I watch the news. Scam alert, scam alert. I get them about once or twice a week on email. Scam alert, scam alert. There are a lot of dishonest people out there uh, taking advantage of this coronavirus situation that are uh, taking, uh, taking advantage of people's concerns, their fears, and the anxiety, and they're taking advantage of these unsuspecting people. Why? To satisfy their own desires and their own lust to obtain riches and to obtain wealth at the cost of somebody else's well-being. The Bible tells us in James chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world? Now notice this. Rich in faith. Not rich in dollars and cents. Not rich in stocks and bonds. Not rich in 401k retirement. But rich in faith. Praise be to God. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world? Rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him. But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Uh, beloved, I'll tell you what. May not have the best that the world has to offer. May not be rich by the world's standards. 
But beloved, as a child of God, we ought to be, you and I, ought to be rich in faith. If you remember our study two weeks ago, if you remember, right before we talked about a double-minded man being unstable in all his ways, you remember verse number six, but let him ask in faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. In other words, let that man ask in faith and trust God and God only. I was speaking with a doctor and uh, went for a follow-up in regard to uh, uh, some of the stomach issues I've had down through the years. It's time for my follow-up appointment. So I had a follow-up appointment. The doctor and I was talking and he made an interesting comment. I thought he made this statement. He said, at the end of the day, he said, if this pandemic continues and the economy continues to worsen, he said, I, I, he said, I rest assured, he said, I will tell you that there'll be more people die of suicide than those that die of the coronavirus because their 401k and their pensions and their life savings have been wiped out. And that's all they've lived for. That's all they've known. And when it's taken away from them, they think there's no reason to live and they'll take their own life. And I thought that was a very astounding statement. And I believe there's a lot of truth in those words. You read about it, you hear about it on the news of how a person of affluence, a wealthy person, something happens to them and all the money all the wealth that they had, their lifestyle, all the possessions, all of a sudden they find out that they don't own it anymore. They don't have it anymore. Or they're on the verge of collapse and they're going to lose it and have to sell it all and get rid of it. Time and time again, we hear about people and read about people that will take their own life because they feel like they have nothing else to live for. Uh, beloved, I try to encourage people to go read the book of Ecclesiastes. And beloved, Solomon, a man who was the wisest man, a man who was the wealthiest man to ever have lived, he realized one thing when it comes to this world system and to this world's goods, that everything under the sun is vanity and vexation of spirit. And as he satisfied his flesh, satisfied his desires it still didn't make him truly happy there was still something missing if you will and at the end of the book of ecclesiastes i paraphrase this but he said in synopsis let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man and there's one thing that money can't buy and beloved that's that peace which passeth all understanding and beloved, that's that assurance of knowing that you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and that heaven will be your home for eternity. Friend, money can't buy that. But Jesus did when he died and was buried and rose again that third day and conquered death in the grave and he's alive forevermore and he's ascended up to heaven and he's at the right hand side of the Father right now making intercession for you and I. And he's sitting there and he's waiting for the Father to say, go get the church. Friend, money can't buy that. I love it today. I think of the millions and the trillions of dollars that's wasted on theories and possibilities and people trying to clone themselves so they can live forever. The fact of the matter is, you go back and read the book of Genesis, God created man to be an eternal being. And man will live in eternity in one of two places. This is not our home, this planet that we live on. We are pilgrims passing through. But man is an eternal being, and man will live in eternity in one of two places. Either in God's glorious heaven or in a devil's hell for eternity. My friend, you try to clone your DNA. You could try to take your body and crowd, uh, crowd freeze it 
So you'll live thousands and thousands of years and come out of a cryogenic state and live in another generation. But the fact of the matter is, it's appointed a man once to die. Then after this, the judgment. And you're going to spend eternity in one of two places. And friend, everybody likes to talk about heaven because heaven's a wonderful place, is it not? Heaven's real. Thank God it is. But also, hell is real. And those that die lost without Christ, friend, they'll spend eternity there where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and eternal separation from God. And so friend, I tell you, don't put your faith and trust in uncertain riches. But put your faith and trust in God. Nothing wavering. Everything in regard to the Christian life centers around faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 19, better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spool with the proud. And beloved, it's better to know God as your Lord and Savior and to be with the humble in spirit than to be with those that know not God and brag about their riches. Now, beloved, because that's all they have. I'll tell you, it's going to burn up one day. I'll, so, I'll give you this verse right here, and then I'll stop here, and we'll pick up with verse number 10 next week. Interesting statement made in Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 2. The rich and poor meet together. That's such a profound statement, and it's so true. I think about this. Uh, there are people that spend their last dollar to go to a basketball game, to a race, to a Super Bowl, World Series, whatever the case may be. And there's those that are rich and affluent because that's where other, others of the rich and affluent society are going to be, and they want to be seen, and so they'll go to the Super Bowl and to different venues, the rich and the poor, they come together. They come together at Walmart. They come together on the job. They come together in the community. The rich and poor meet together. But notice now the rest of the verse. The Lord <laughs> is the maker of them all. And beloved, the word of God tells us that one day, rich poor, in between, doesn't make any difference with God because God is not a respecter of persons. And beloved, the Bible tells us that one day every knee will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, beloved, for those that will not confess that he's Lord now, one day when they stand before God in judgment, they will bow and they will confess that Jesus is Lord. And for the believer, we'll bow down and we'll confess that Jesus is Lord, but we, ought, but we can also say that he's our Savior. Praise be to God. Praise be to the Lamb that was slain. The brother of low degree rejoice in that. Let the brother of low degree rejoice and that he is exalted. Now, beloved, people may, may make fun of you now. People may make a mockery of you now, but one day when you stand before God and God looks down upon you and he doesn't look at your checkbook, he doesn't look at what you obtained here upon this earth in dollars and cents, he'll look down and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Friend, let me tell you something. The joy that you'll have in your heart then Money can't buy. I know there's a lot of hysteria. I know there's a lot of people worried about the economy. I know that there's a lot of people worried about their 401k. Now, beloved, I've heard people lose fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in the last couple of weeks in regard to their 401k. Friend, at the end of the day, what you and I have, we have by the grace of God. God's the one that's given to us. And I've had people say, Preacher, look here on paper how much I've lost. Well, 
friend, you may have lost a lot of dollars and cents on paper. But there's another, another recording that I want you to think about. Something else that's being written down. At the end of the day, when you stand before God in eternity, the Bible says, and the books will be opened. And whosoever's name that's not found, written in the book of life. won't be allowed to go to enter into heaven. Friend, I wouldn't be worried about what's written on your 401k statement. I'd be worried about whether or not making sure your name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so we'll stop right here and we'll pick up at verse 10 if it be the Lord's will next week. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for your word and for the instruction that we receive from thy word. And Father, I ask and pray now that you give the increase to your word as it goes forward. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And amen.